नमस्कार एवरीवन टुडे वी वुड अंडरस्टैंड इलास्टिक एनर्जी मेथड्स फॉर फाइंडिंग डिफ्लेक्शन एंड रिएक्शन इन इलास्टिक सिस्टम्स सो लेट अस कंसीडर अ बार व्हिच इज एक्सपीरियंसिंग अ लोड कैपिटल पी so we have in front of us a bar which is experiencing a load capital p in the axial direction length of the bar is capital m l and area of cross section is capital a now let us look at the stress strain curve of this bar you can see this is a typical typically non linearly elastic material and that is why stress strain curve is non linear and we can see that uh, when stress sigma 1 increases from sigma 1 to sigma 1 plus d sigma 1 there is a corresponding increase in strain from strain 1 to strain 1 plus d strain 1 now if we multiply the stress by corresponding area of cross section and also multiply strain by uh, length of the bar then we get load deflection curve like this right so we can see that when there is a increase in load from p1 to p1 plus dp1 the deflection increase is from delta 1 triangle 1 to triangle 1 plus d triangle 1 now now let us find evaluate the external work done in this case would be equal to p1 into d triangle 1 now this external work done on the system would get stored inside the system as strain energy so we have in front of us equation 1232 which gives external work done we is equal to strain energy equal to integral from zero to triangle p1 d triangle 1 now from this <coughs> relation we can derive relation 1233 which says du by d triangle equal to capital p now let us look at complementary external work the complementary external work is given by triangle 1 into d p1 now here we can see on the load deflection curve complementary external work is d p1 multiplied by triangle 1 this horizontal strip represents complementary external work now this complementary external work should get stored inside the body as complementary strain energy and this vertical strip represents external work and which should get stored inside the body as strain energy now <coughs> now we can write therefore equation 1234 that is complementary strain energy equal to complementary external work and that is equal to integral from 0 to capital p 
triangle one d p one now the derivative of this relation allows us to uh, write equation 1235 which is du star by dp equal to triangle where superscript star represents complementary quantity so the deformation triangle is equal to du star by dp and the load applied capital p can be obtained by differentiating strain energy and uh, load applied capital p is du by d triangle now let us look at one general case of uh, elastic body <clears throat> Now, in front of our screen, there is an elastic body which is experiencing loads in different directions P1, P2, PK, PM, PN, and also it is experiencing moments M1, M2, MJ, MM. For this uh, general case, we can write that complementary strain energy u star as u star function of capital p1 p2 uh, pk pn and also moments m1 m2 up to m3 now this u star is represents complementary strain energy and infinitesimal increase in this function can be written as du star equal to curly u star by curly p1 delta p1 plus curly u star by curly p2 delta p2 like that curly u star by curly pk into delta pk and also uh, so on curly u star by curly mj into delta mj <coughs> now <coughs> if uh, If only force PK were increased by delta PK, right? If there is an increase by delta PK in only force PK, then we can write then we can write uh, delta U star equal to curly U uh, uh, curly U star by curly PK into delta PK. This we have arrived from. this equation where all other terms would be zero and non-zero term would be only this term curly u star by curly pk delta pk <coughs> so we have the complementary strain energy increment equal to curly u star by curly pk delta pk now this uh, increase in complementary strain energy should be equal to the complementary external work in this case complementary external work would be delta k into delta uh, triangle k into delta pk right now how it would be triangle k into delta pk this we can understand by considering this system now in this figure a you can see there is a body which is being acted upon by different forces and there is a moment also moments are also there and due to different forces at kth location there is a deformation of triangle k and in this scenario we can see only delta pk is acting and there is a deformation of delta triangle k in the direction of delta pk 
now equivalent of these two scenarios can be if uh, this one system is applied first and then uh, this two uh, second scenario or the second scenario is applied first and this first scenario so if uh, first scenario is applied first and then the second scenario then we have this system right here, here you can see uh, we have k uh, at the location of kth force we have pk plus delta pk and the deformation is triangle k plus delta triangle k and if we apply this scenario first and then this scenario then again we will get the same result which is given in dth figure and you can see in dth figure deformation at the location of kth force is delta triangle k plus triangle k and the uh, force at the kth location is delta pk plus pk now if we consider this uh, figure at d figure d right then what we have done is we ha we have first of all applied delta pk and which has resulted into delta triangle k and thereafter we have applied all these forces p1 p2 pk pn and all that now in this scenario what will happen is this delta pk would do a work uh, delta pk into triangle k that incremental work right so So this external, uh, small external work, complementary external work can be written as triangle K into delta PK, right? Now, uh, since external complementary work should be equal to external, uh, should be equal to uh, this uh, complementary strain energy. So we have delta triangle K equal to curly U star by curly PK. And similarly, we can also uh, derive theta J equal to curly U star by curly MJ, where theta J is rotation at Jth location and mj is moment acting at the jth location in analogous manner let us uh, find out the strain energy now strain energy can be written as a function of triangle 1 triangle 2 triangle 3 and theta 1 theta 2 up to theta m and uh, in differential form, total differential form, it can be written as delta u equal to curly u by curly triangle 1 delta triangle 1 plus curly u by curly triangle 2 delta triangle 2 like that. And if uh, only one displacement were allowed to occur with the other remaining fixed, so equation 1243 reduces to delta u equal to curly u by curly triangle k delta triangle k right and this change in internal energy has to be equal to equal to the external uh, work which is pk delta triangle k so equating the two we get pk equal to curly u by curly triangle k so <clears throat> these are the relations for nonlinear elastic 
materials. So for nonlinear elastic materials, we can write that triangle K or the deformation at the kth point equal to curly U star by curly PK, where star denotes complementary quantities. And load at kth location can be written as curly U by curly triangle K. Now let us look at the Castiglianos theorem. Now Castiglianos is theorem is valid for linearly elastic materials or for the range in which the material is perfectly elastic or the stress strain curve is linear. So let us look at figure 1217. So here we can see that <coughs> complementary energy U star is equal to elastic strain energy capital U. So we have um, this uh, stress strain curve, uh, sorry, the load deflection curve, which is perfectly linear. And you can see the two triangles. And the area of these two triangles is same. So for perfectly elastic materials, elastic strain energy U is equal to the complementary strain energy U star equation 1246. And because of that, now we can write for uh, linear elastic materials, triangle K equal to curly U star by curly PK equal to curly U by curly PK. And theta J equal to curly U star by curly MJ equal to curly U by curly MJ. And also for linear elastic materials, we can write PK equal to curly U by curly triangle K. And also we can also write instead of this PK we can write MJ equal to curly U by curly theta J. Now let us uh, solve some questions. So this is example 12.9. By applying Castiglianos second theorem, verify the results of examples 2, 10, 4, 11, and 10, 12. Right, so let us look at. So, uh, <clears throat> so we have to find out how much is the deflection uh, due to a load capital P on a bar, axially loaded bar. So for axially loaded bar, expression of strain energy is P square L by 2 AE, where P is the load, axial load, L is the length of the bar, A is the area of cross section, and E is the Young's modulus of elasticity. So now using Castiglianos theorem, we can write triangle equal to curly U by curly P. And that gives us PL by AE. We have to write it earlier also. Similarly, for a circular shaft experiencing a torque capital T of length capital L uh, and modulus of rigidity G, the expression of uh, Strain energy is T square L by 2JG. 
and uh, uh, the angular deformation now theta or the twist theta can be written as from Castigliano's theorem as curly u by curly t and that gives us tl by j g <coughs> Now, let us try to find out deflection of a rectangular cantilever due to end load capital P. Uh, we have earlier uh, derived that strain energy of a uh, cantilever due to end load capital P is P square L cube by 6 EI plus 3 P square L by 5 AG. Now, to find out the Deflection, we have to simply derivate this expression of strain energy with respect with respect to end load. And we get PL cube by 3EI plus 6PL by 5AG. Now let us uh, do example 1210. So we have a bracket and uh, so we have to find out the deflection of point B due to applied force P of three kilopounds using Castiglano's second theorem. So this is the bracket A, B, C, and this is experiencing a load of 3000 pounds at point B. And we want to find out how much would be the deflection in vertical direction at point capital B using Castiglianos theorem. Now for this uh, truss, The expression for elastic strain energy can be written as summation k equal to 1 to 2 pk square lk square divided by 2 ak ek where pk is load acting on uh, kth member lk is length of kth member ek is area of cross section of eighth kth member and ek is Young's modulus of elasticity of Kth member. So that gives us P1 square L1 by 2A1E plus P2 square L2 by 2A2E. Now <clears throat> to find out uh, 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 deflection of point B, we have to differentiate it with respect to P. So triangle equal to curly U star by curly P that is P1 L1 by A1E curly P1 by curly P plus P2 L1 by A2E curly P2 by curly P. Now we need to find out a relation between P1 and P. And from statics, we can find out that P1 equal to under root 5P divided by 3 and P2 equal to minus 2 under root 2 divided by 3 into P. Substituting these expressions of capital P1 and capital P2 into equation 12, 14 and B, we get expression of <coughs> deflection uh, triangle as uh, in front of your screen and that comes out to be 18.2 milli inch. Now let us uh, look at this. A linearly elastic prismatic beam is loaded as shown. Again, using Castigliano's second theorem, find the deflection due to bending caused by applied force P at the center. So this is a beam which is experiencing a central load of capital P. And we want to know what <coughs> will be the deflection at the center of this beam due to vertical load capital P. So here what we have to do is we have to simply find out the expression of strain energy and we know that for a beam the strain energy is given by 
integral from 0 to L m square by 2 ei dx. This is the expression of strain energy of a beam. And using the Castiglianos theorem, now we can write triangle equal to curly u by curly p equal to integral 0 to L m by ei curly m by curly p dx. And in this case, we know capital M is equal to uh, p by 2 x. So curly m by curly uh, p would be x by 2. On substituting these relations uh, and uh, on observing the symmetry of the problem, we can find out triangle equal to PL cube divided by 48 EI. This is the deflection at center of the beam due to application of vertical load capital P. The next, uh, using Castiglianos second theorem, determine the deflection and the angular rotation of the end of a uniformly loaded cantilever. Right? So there is a uniformly loaded cantilever. And uh, let us look at the cantilever. So here is the cantilever. So we have a uniformly uh, loaded cantilever and this cantilever uh, So we want to find out the deflection and the angular rotation of the end of a uniformly loaded cantilever. We want to find out how much is the deflection here and how much is the uh, rotation, right? Now, the end is not experiencing any uh, load or moment. So how will we do it? So let us assume that the end is experiencing a reaction RA, force RA. Right? And uh, now let us find out the expression of bending moment. So bending moment would be minus W naught X square by two plus R A X. Okay. And curly M by curly R A would be equal to X. Now use the Castiglianos theorem, which is triangle A equal to curly U by curly R A. And that gives us one by E I, integral from zero to L bracket start minus W naught X square by two plus R A X bracket close X DX. Now <clears throat> here we will take R A equal to zero. If we take R A equal to zero in this expression, so we get triangle A equal to minus W naught L to the power four by eight EI. Please appreciate that in this case, we were asked to find out uh, deflection at cantilever end, this end. And there, here there is no force, vertical force acting. So uh, to solve this problem using Castiglianos theorem, we have introduced from our side a force Ra and uh, then applied the Castiglianos theorem. And once we got uh, when once we uh, applied the Castiglianos theorem, we got this expression.
we got this expression for triangle A and uh, we have then used uh, uh, the fact that Ra equal to 0 to arrive at the final result minus W0 L to the power 4 by ATI. Now to find out moment, uh, to find out rotation at the free end, we will introduce a fictitious moment MA at the end. So here you can see a fictitious moment MA has been introduced. This moment was not occurring earlier. So this has been introduced only so that we can conveniently apply Castigliano's theorem. So expression of bending moment now becomes minus W naught X square by two minus capital M A and curly M by curly M A becomes minus one. And uh, uh, this uh, expression of uh, deflection now becomes triangle A equal to curly U by curly MA equal to one by EI integration zero to L bracket start minus W naught X square by two minus MA bracket close bracket start minus one bracket close DX. Now here we will take MA equal to zero since in the original problem, there is no moment which is acting at the free end of the cantilever. So this gives us triangle A equal to W naught L cube by six EI. 